Next, I've been training is all about exporting the video since it's helpful to actually share the video that you just spent all that time editing. Here, I'm gonna walk you through the entire process to properly export your video depending on the platform and place it's going to go. All right, now let's jump right into it. Right now, we are gonna talk about how to export your video, what are the best settings depending on where you want the video to go. So we have our timeline here, we've you know, put in the work, we've made an awesome piece of content and video, and now it's time to share and export it. So there's a couple ways we can go about doing this. The first one is the export button to the right of our kind of toolboxes over here, or if you're a shortcut person like me, you can hit Command or Control E, and that is going to bring up our export dialog box here in the middle. Now you got a whole bunch of options here and it's really nice because you may be exporting to social media, you may be just saving it to a DVD or to your computer, wherever you want it to go, there's a setting uh, kind of built for it. So going across the top, we can see that there are spaces for formats, the type of device it may be ending up on, your YouTube, which you can actually sign in and basically input all of the uh, basic metadata you need for a YouTube video and export it directly to your YouTube channel, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can have all of your privacy settings and descriptions and everything going on in here. Similar to YouTube, you have Vimeo if you're posting it to Vimeo. You can burn it straight to a DVD. You know, maybe not as common nowadays, but it's still nice to have the option uh, if you're into creating DVDs. Now, going back to the device, why would you pick something like this? Well, it's super easy and efficient at basically exporting a video at the proper size, compression, and everything that's going to look good on that specific device. For example, if we pick an iPhone, we can see that it's averaging around 41 megabytes. It's going to be 1080p, and it's going to stick to Rec. 709. These are all things that are going to look good on a phone. And as you go down these different presets, you can see the kind of size change uh, as well as resolution to kind of recommended settings. Now, you can jump into any of them and kind of customize to your liking, for example, if you want this to go to Apple TV 4K, you want it to look really good, well, maybe you want to upraise it then to 4K. You can change the frame rate, I do 24. The quality, I want the best. You can go HDR if you got one of those fancy HDR TVs and you shot in HDR and all that good stuff. And if I hit OK here, you can see that it greatly impacts the size of the uh, estimated uh, file size once you're done exporting. So if you know the device that it's going to, checking out one of these presets may be the way to go. For me personally, 99% of the time, I am sticking to the format page. Just because here you can actually choose the uh, file extension or the format or the codec, whatever you want to call it, that you will uh, be exporting it to because I may save it to my computer, but then I may upload it to YouTube, may go to TikTok or Instagram. I like having kind of a universally good video file that can go everywhere. And pretty much the top two file types that you're going to stick to are MOV or MP4. If you're on a Mac, most video files are MOV. Uh, if you're on a PC, it usually defaults to MP4. Um, but at least on a Mac, both of these file types play back perfectly fine. On a PC, I could be wrong. It's been a little bit since I used one. Uh, but MOVs, you used to have to install a plugin to view on a PC. If you're sticking to PCs, you probably want to go MP4. HEVC is basically good at retaining quality while also shrinking the file size. So it's like really smart compression algorithms uh, at play. So you can kind of see if there's any file size difference when you kind of hover between these three. Now, if you really want super minimal compression and you don't care about the file size, then I'd recommend Apple ProRes. For example, if you're exporting from here and then you want to import that into like another video editor and you don't want to lose much quality uh, from doing that, then I definitely recommend ProRes. It's going to be much larger file sizes. For example, again, if I change this to uh, full 4K, 24, and we're in Apple ProRes, 
You have uh, various different flavors of ProRes. And again, this gives you more options in terms of uh, what the file size is going to end up being based on the quality. Again, if you want the highest quality possible, then you could go 422 HQ or 444. Four, 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 four. If you want a little less, uh, you know, a little more compression, smaller file size, 422, 422 LT, and then 422 proxy is going to be your smallest one. Uh, so it just depends what you want out of it. I'm going to stick to 422. We're going to stick to full 4K. And I never really adjust audio settings too much. I'm going to hit OK. And you can see it's estimating around 102 megabytes. Very small because this is a very, very basic uh, video project. And these actually are all 1080p clips. So it actually is just up resing. If these were 4K clips, then this file size would probably be significantly bigger. Now, if you don't want to export uh, the video at all and you only want to export the audio, you have some audio options as well, like MP3. So this will just basically export any music, sound effects, dialogue, basically any sounds from your video, uh, and it'll just give you something to listen to, and it's ridiculously small file sizes. So uh, if all you care about is checking out the sound of your video for whatever reason, then you could go straight to MP3. Now, regardless of what you choose, uh, you can adjust the settings as we talked about. You're going to name your uh, video file. So again, I can say this is kitchen scene, and I'll put the ever so cliche <laughs> final. We're going to save this to wherever we want. So I'm going to just put it on the desktop for now. Again, we can adjust our settings. I want this in the very best. We want this 4K because why not? Highest bit rate possible, and it's not HDR footage, so don't need to change that. Going to hit OK, and now we can see the file size has changed. And right before we go to export, you do have an option to upload to the cloud. If you have no idea what that is, uh, Wondershare basically has its own uh, drive, which is really cool, which basically allows you to store your video files so you can access uh, remotely if you wanted to. So these are all the different plans. You can check out specifics over on drive.wondershare.com. So if you have that set up, you can check that off. And also if you have a decent computer, you know, you got some GPUs in there or anything, make sure this is checked off. Enable hardware acceleration for video encoding. It's going to use basically as much computer power as you have to export the video and make it go a lot faster. So that should be checked by default, but if for some reason you turned it off, you may want to turn it back on if it's there. And then we're just simply going to click export and we can see our progress with thumbnails and everything down here. And once we hit 100%, we get a nice little ding. And we can see on our desktop that our uh, video has been exported. And a nice little congratulations from Filmora. Thank you. Uh, I'm very proud of this video myself. And I'm proud of you all as well for exporting uh, potentially your first video. So if you want to see more of these videos, stick around because we got a lot more fun things to talk about.